going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all of the records that I acquired within the month of October this year in 2020. But real quick, before we get into the haul, I want to give you guys a quick update in regards to a video that I had scheduled to go up in early October. I actually did a post about this on my social media pages as well as my YouTube page. Uh, the video that I am talking about is my vinyl pressing comparison of King Crimson's In the Court of the Crimson King. Uh, literally minutes before it was due to go live on YouTube, uh, YouTube had claimed uh, the music that was used in the video because it was copyrighted understandably so any ad revenue goes to the rights holders of the music uh but youtube had blocked it from going live which was rather stressful literally i woke up minutes before 9 a.m and i saw the email that it got blocked and it was just panic mode and because i did promise a king crimson video i instead uploaded my king crimson studio catalog ranking that i basically had ready and saved up for whenever it would go up so i still delivered a king crimson video Video. And after doing numerous edits and variations of the video, I have it set up to where uh, YouTube will obviously claim the music, but it will not block it from being uploaded to YouTube for the public to see. And I am looking to upload that video sometime around early to mid-December. There's a lot of other content that I want to get out as soon as possible. So I was just kind of looking at my schedule list and seeing what day was empty and I can get it up as soon as possible. So be sure to stay tuned around early to mid-December to see that vinyl um, pressing comparison video. You guys are not going to want to miss it. But anyways, let's get to this vinyl haul. There are all kinds of cool things I'm going to be showing in this haul. We have some goodies uh, from Milk Records in Australia. We have some new releases from Steve Hackett, Roger Waters, and Ace Furley. We have a rather cool Van Halen record. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. As well as a bunch of other cool records that I got this month. It's about to go deep. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest finds. All right, so we are going to be kicking this haul off on a rather cool note with a package that I have been longing to receive for a while. This is coming all the way from Australia, from Milk Records. This is Courtney Barnett's label. Uh, towards the tail end of August, they were running a big sale on their website. It was like ranging from like 50% off, 75% off, just random items on their merch store. And I, of course, jumped on it when I saw what was being offered uh, as part of the sale. So first, before we get into the vinyl, of course, because I like to represent labels that I like, I did get myself a Milk Records t-shirt, which is designed by Courtney Barnett herself, and I will be sporting it just like so. So here is the shirt right here. I will gladly be sporting this out. Now let's get to the vinyl. So I picked up Milk on Milk. And one of the cool things that Milk Records does is that they do all these little label samplers, mostly like digital downloads, but they do a couple vinyl uh, releases. I have the other one that they did. I got it back um, during quarantine and I've been meaning to get this one and this was part of the sale. So I figured I would snag it. And this features basically a bunch of artists that are on the Milk Records roster. So of course we have Courtney Barnett, uh, Hachiku, which is one of my favorites, uh, Tiny Ruins, uh, Jen Clover is on here, The Finks, Evelyn Ida Morris, um, just all kinds of great talented artists on Milk. Uh, here is the back side as well. Here's the gatefold, which features all of the various artists recording their bits for this compilation. And uh, one of the things that I absolutely loved upon opening this package was the addition of a nice little note basically thanking me for my purchase now i'm gonna call it they probably have these all printed up and everything but what made it especially cool was the fact that they addressed it to my name with a nice little smiley face and a heart so that was a really nice touch and here is the vinyl itself nice custom labels there Very, very cool. And then as well with everything else, they threw in a free 
Milk Record sticker, and that'll be going right on my car bumper where I like to represent all the brands that I support. So really excited to be giving this compilation a spin because I love releases like this. You know, these are great primers to dig into some new artists. You know, aside from these guys, you know, Third Man Records did single uh, release compilations as part of their Vault subscription service, and I have all those, and those are just fun listens. Very eclectic in terms of styles, and I'm definitely excited to uh, dig into this compilation and see what new artists I might be getting into. All right, so here is a brand new release that just came out I want to say about a week ago, it came all the way from England. The reason being because I ordered this directly from the artist web store and it is the newest live release by Mr. Steve Hackett, guitarist of Genesis. He likes to put out the live albums quite often, but in all honesty, they're great souvenirs if you saw him live. So this one is called Selling England by the Pound and Spectrum Mornings live at Hammersmith. And oddly enough, for as many times as I've seen Steve Hackett live, I did not see this tour because you have to pick and choose what shows you see because of work, money, and everything. So now I can experience it here with this release. And um, also interesting that they did a vinyl release of this because um, the other live releases that he has done did not get a vinyl release initially. Uh, they did re uh, release the Royal Albert Hall Genesis Revisited uh, show a couple months back, and I do have that. So who knows? Maybe they'll be reissuing the others, but I digress. Uh, with this release, um, Hackett is covering his favorite grounds because there is a heavy emphasis uh, of his solo album, Spectral Mornings, which he proclaims as his favorite. And then he performs his favorite Genesis album from start to finish, that being Selling England by the Pound. So it's all covered here. He also throws in a couple of uh, Genesis songs for the encore. He covers some stuff off of his uh, latest solo album. It's all here. Now, this is the limited colored variant of this release. This is limited to 300 copies. And since it is a pre-order from his website... It is also signed as well. Show you guys the back. This is a 4LP collection. And also, major props for the packaging because it comes in a slip case, which is a major upgrade compared to just the basic gatefold sleeve that they had for the Royal Albert Hall. And they just stuffed 4LPs in that. I was not a fan of that, but they definitely upgraded for sure. And we basically have two gatefold sleeves here with all kinds of different photos, uh, great shots of him performing live, gatefold sleeve, which is very cool. And we even get a nice little photo insert, which is beautiful. We have some credits here, live shots of his band. And the four LPs, I'm not going to showcase all of them because they basically all look the same, um, comes on Lawnmower Green Vinyl, which is a reference to the song I Know What I Like off of Selling England by the Pound. And I also will show you guys that there are different uh, photos used for the custom labels on all of the LPs, which is a very, very nice touch. I'll show you guys this one as well. It's a cool shot right there with the white lights. And then we have the second gatefold, which covers the third and fourth record. Show you guys the center labels once again. Very nice quality stuff. And there we go. Beautifully designed, beautifully put together, and I'm sure this is going to sound absolutely wonderful on the turntable, and I cannot wait to give this one a listen. Steve Hackett, Selling England by the Pound, and Spectrum Mornings, live at Hammersmith. All right, so this is an entirely different setting. That's simply because this weekend, uh, it is my best friend's wedding. Uh, the girlfriend and I got a hotel room for the weekend, and coincidentally, on the way to the hotel, is Sky Valley Records. So I contacted Chuck, the owner of Sky Valley Records fairly recently, simply because recently Iron Maiden had announced a live album from their Legacy of the Beast tour live in Mexico City. And of course, 
I jumped on that immediately and then I realized that I actually had a bootleg from that tour which was recorded at the O2 in London and I felt that upon hearing about the official release that's going to be coming out next month um, I could perhaps part ways with my bootleg so I contacted him about it sent him some photos explain exactly what you know what entailed with the release and he said stop by the store and we'll see what we can do and honestly this was one of the best trades I ever did at a record store because normally I would bring some records in at like my other local record store and they can only give me so much because obviously they have to make a profit which I totally understand but this was a case where I basically got major bang for my buck for what I brought in and I was able to leave with something of basically equal value which was pretty awesome and I kept it in the maiden vein because I left with Iron Maiden's Rock in Rio. Now this is one of my favorite Iron Maiden live releases. This is from the Brave New World tour cycle. Uh, this marks the return of uh, Bruce Dickinson and Adrian Smith. Fantastic tracks on here. We have uh, The Wicker Man, Ghost of the Navigator, Wrath Child, Two Minutes to Midnight, Blood Brothers, um, The Klansmen. Uh, there is an exceptionally fantastic version of Fear of the Dark on here where the audience sings along to the melody. It is superb. And then the band actually did a surprise encore of Run to the Hills, which is fantastic. This is a triple gatefold sleeve here, which I will open up and show you. There's Eddie on this side. We have a cool photo collage here and then we also have all of the lyrics here as well so you can sing along as you listen to this album this comes on standard black vinyl three lps and they all come with custom uh, center labels as well which are all different which is pretty cool i'll show you side one which is basically the cover photo then we have side two here which is the back cover photo and I'll show you guys three and four. We have an audience shot here. And then there's Eddie and the clowns here. And then we get to the last LP, which is actually uh, perhaps my favorite center labels of this package. There are the guys there at the very end of the show. And then we kind of have a slightly modified version of the Brazilian flag with Eddie there, which is pretty cool. So all around great package. This is one I've been longing to get for a number of years, finally in the collection. I still have some ways to go with some of the more recent uh, live Maiden albums as well as studio albums. So I'm definitely completing some holes in my collection. But nonetheless, this was one that I was very happy to leave with. And sure enough, it was a trade that I was ultimately satisfied with. Iron Maiden's Rock and Rio. All right, so here is a Walmart exclusive that came my way while I was away for the wedding. Uh, this is going to be kind of shocking because I do not have any compilations of this band on vinyl in my collection, as shocking as that seems, but this is a first in that instance, and I am talking about Rush Icon. Now, Icon is a series of compilations that labels put out under, like, the Universal umbrella, uh, they're great for, like, you know, the casual fan, the new fan, or for completists, it's another compilation to buy. Uh, but this one's really interesting because we have some notable tr uh, tracks on here like Limelight, Free Will, and Closer to the Heart. But then there's also some rather interesting deeper cuts on here, such as The Twilight Zone and Circumstances. It basically covers, like, the Mercury Records era of 74 up until 87, and I figured I don't have any Rush compilations in my collection, so this would be a nice little addition. Here is the back cover. And since this is exclusive to Walmart, it does come pressed on red vinyl, which is very fitting due to the uh, color scheme of the cover with some nice custom labels as well. So this is very nice. Um, this has been released on CD before, and usually um, they try to cover like each album um, within the compilation itself. But the one track that is missing on this is the Necromancer, which appeared on the CD from Caress of Steel. But obviously you can't really fit a 12 minute track onto a single LP compilation. It would ha have to be a double basically. 
But nonetheless, this is a really cool piece of Rush vinyl to add to my collection. Rush Icon. All right, so here is a brand new release that just came out this past Friday. I received it today on a Monday, and I was expecting it either on release date or sometime before release date because I did order this off of Bull Moose, and they tend to ship out pre-orders rather early. Uh, it got shipped from Maine, where they're based out of, down to Florida, and then here to Jersey, which I don't know what exactly happened, but what matters is it's finally here. And it is... Roger Waters, Us and Them. This right here is the audio companion piece to uh, his film, Us and Them, which was filmed during the tour of the same name. Uh, a fantastic film. I saw it when it got a small theatrical run. Uh, they just released uh, the Blu-ray of it, which I do have as well. And of course, I jumped on the vinyl soundtrack. Um, this stands as a permanent concert souvenir for me personally, because I did catch this tour twice. Uh, he did three nights at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. There were two that were originally scheduled, and then he added on a third night, and I had tickets for the first two. I didn't go see the third. Uh, the first night was really awesome because it was the first concert that my girlfriend and I saw together as a couple, which was awesome. And then the second night, I went with my parents and my godmother. Um, fantastic show. Very awesome in terms of the visuals and everything. Like, if you see on the back here, that was at the very end of the show during Eclipse. Had the prism with the laser lights. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, he covers all the classic Floyd territory material. You know, a lot of stuff off of Dark Side of the Moon. Wish You Were Here, a little bit from the wall. Uh, he does animals as well in the uh, second part of the show. That's when the little Battersea Power Station model comes uh, in the middle of the audience, which is fantastic. The pig and everything. It, it was fantastic. And uh, he also does uh, some stuff off of his latest uh, solo album, Is This the Life We Really Want? Comes with a nice booklet, which has some liner notes and photos, kind of just taking you through the process of the show. And there, there's that Battersea Power Station model right in the middle of the audience. That was fantastic. Very nice. And each record comes in printed inner sleeves with photos and the track list of each respected record. I'm just going to show one of the records to you. It basically looks the same across the board. Um, we kind of have this black on black kind of label there. You can kind of read the text kind of faintly. It's like a very faint shade of gray, which you can read. And then there's a photo on the other label as well, which is pretty cool. And I'll show you guys the other uh, printed inners as well, just so you can see those for the sake of covering everything. Here's record number two. And here is record number three. So very, very nicely put together. And then there was also a download card in this as well. So I could download that to the laptop, burn it on a CD, put it in the car, jam out to it there. Uh, really excited to give this one a spin. Roger Waters, Us and Them. All right, so there comes the time in the vinyl hall where it is the obligatory um, Discover cashback bonus Amazon purchase. That is what this record is. And it's kind of in line with what I got the previous month. And this particular band, as of filming this clip, is going to be dropping their newest single off of their upcoming album tomorrow on Wednesday. And I cannot wait for it. I have been listening to this band a lot these past couple days, just hyping myself up for the single, digging my way through their catalog once more, and finally getting an album that fills a hole in my ACDC collection. And this is their 1988 album, Blow Up Your Video. Uh, this is one, honestly, I have not referenced quite often. I'm aware of the hits, obviously, on this, Heat Seeker, and That's the Way I Want to Rock and Roll. And a couple of my other favorite songs on this are the two closing tracks, Two's Up and the fast-paced This Means War. Other than that, I'm excited to dig my way through this album. Here is the front and back. And of course, as always, print and inner sleeve, liner notes and photos, well designed and set up. You know, these ACDC reissues, you really can't go wrong with them. They sound absolutely fantastic. Custom label there as always. Nice heavyweight vinyl. Nothing to complain about here. It's ACDC. It's 
Back in Black Redux, essentially. I say that in the nicest way. Not not that, you know, every album has sounded the same then, but there's some little interesting bits and pieces in other records. But like I always say, with ACDC, they're a band where you don't have to take any risks. You buy an ACDC album, you know what you're getting, and you won't be disappointed. And I'm excited to dig my way through this. ACDC's Blow Up Your Video. All right, so here is a new release that came out last month in September. It has finally arrived today. Um, a couple of days after I pre-ordered it sometime in July, I got an email saying that there were some manufacturing delays uh, in terms of the pressing that I ordered, and it should be like shipping out between like late September to early October. Finally came in. It's the newest solo album from Space Ace himself, Ace Furley. This is Origins Volume 2, um, a collection of covers. And honestly, this is going to be a solid listen indeed, because when you have a covers album that has Good Times, Bad Times by Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple Space Truckin', Hendrix Manic Depression, The Beatles' I'm Down, Stones is Jumpin' Jack Flash, and he even covers the Kiss song, She. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic listen. I am so excited for this. Um, shockingly enough, I do not have a vinyl copy of Origins Volume 1. I have it on CD. There was an FYE exclusive pressing that I did not pick up, and I don't really know why. Um, hopefully that gets a repressing soon because it's like out of print at this point. Uh, this pressing in particular is exclusive to his web store. Um, there is a black border with gold text on this version, which is only available on the web store. Whereas the standard version, which appears on the CD, because yes, you have to buy the CD and the vinyl. You know, you got to have everything. You can kind of see it's a blue border with white text, which is also an indicator as to what color this pressing is. Anyways, front and back side, there's Madison Square Garden there. Gatefold sleeve with some credits and artwork. We also have an insert here, Kiss with special guest Cheap Trick, which is pretty cool. That's a throwback from the 70s. Some liner notes written by Julian Gill, who runs the Kiss FAQ uh, website, and he also does the podcast of the same name as well. And also, this little Cheap Trick nod is a little hint in terms of the special guests on this, because uh, Robin Zander appears on a track, and even Bruce Kulick appears on a track, which is pretty cool. And let's take a look at this vinyl pressing. And of course, to kind of add a reference to the black and gold on this cover, it comes on black and gold vinyl, kind of translucent in a way. You can kind of see through it. Has a nice kind of rippled effect going on right in the middle, which is pretty solid. Nice custom labels, uh, beautifully designed. There are several different colored variants of this album out. There's like an indie exclusive, which is on blue and white. Then there's like a black and blue one. There's galaxy purple. Um, they're probably just gonna cover the entire 85 pack of the Crayola box. That's my ongoing joke when it comes to albums that have so many color pressings. And here is the second one. I figured I'll showcase this one because there's, you know, no two that are going to look the same. It's rather a unique kind of pressing uh, process. So it looks different all across, which is very nice. Very sharp indeed. And uh, I am very excited to give this album a spin. Ace Frehley has been really killing it lately with his solo albums, whether it's the Origin series or his regular solo stuff. He's been consistent. And also, it's Ace Frehley. His solo album in 78 was the best out of the four, but we're not going to get into that today. Cannot wait to give this one a spin. Ace Frehley, Origins Volume 2. All right, so I took another trip over to Sky Valley Records the other day with my friend, uh, the one that actually just got married, like I mentioned. Uh, we always have this thing every time we get together because we like to shop. You know, she's into clothes, I'm into records, and anytime she gets herself an article of clothing of her choosing, I pick up some records for myself. That's just a thing that we do. But also, it's, it's an excuse for me to get some or records, but that's besides the point. So we took a trip to Sky Valley and I'm a part of their Facebook page where basically the owner, Chuck, um, uploads all kinds of new stuff like every day that he gets in as he receives it. So I saw this particular record uh, posted on the page. This was like a, roughly about a week ago. I saw it in person. I was like, you know what? I think I'll give it a shot because I do like this particular band. I have their first album, which is an absolutely fantastic listen. And uh, this particular record is their second album and it's also the last one that they did for a number of years because they basically disbanded a little bit after this album had come out i am talking about the new york glam rockers the new york dolls in too much too soon 
Don't know too much about this album, but like I said, I do like the New York Dolls, and I figured I can dig my way uh, deeper uh, through their catalog with this particular album. Very glamish looking album artwork here. Also does come with a nice little download code. Here is a printed inner sleeve where we have some band photographs, as you can see. And it's pressed on very nice heavyweight 180 gram vinyl. And here we have that lipstick uh, custom center label. This also appears on their first album as well. Very nice stuff. Uh, definitely excited to give this album a listen and see what entails with it. And there we go. Good stuff. New York Dolls in too much too soon. All right, so here is a freebie that I got from RollingRecords.com. Um, the big notable headline that's been going on in the music world this month is, of course, the passing of Eddie Van Halen, one of the most influential and greatest guitarists ever. And Roland Rex uh, was doing a promo where if you bought something off of the website, if you insert the promo code Van Halen, all lowercase in one word, you would get this record here for free and of course i like free records and of course i like van halen so i decided to jump on it and i got my hands on a copy so this is for unlawful carnal knowledge uh this is notable for featuring uh pound cake uh right now as well as top of the world this resides in the Van Hagar era of Van Halen, uh, which, of course, was when Sammy Hagar was the vocalist. Um, I like the Van Hagar stuff. Um, I will be honest, though, I'm not too fond of it as uh, compared to the kind of David Lee Roth led stuff. But I always liked Sammy Hagar's style, and I like the stuff that I've heard that he's done with Van Halen. And I also don't have any Van Hagar stuff in my Vana collection, so this is a first. Now, this is a unofficial pressing. Um, original pressings command hundreds and even thousands of dollars. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, comes with a photo insert with some pictures of the band. And this does indeed come on red vinyl which is pretty sharp um the van hagar stuff has never really gotten a proper kind of remastering campaign no reissues everything's kind of focused on the raw fears which i kind of understand that's where the most legendary stuff comes from but then again the stuff that sammy did with them is fantastic so who knows maybe sometime in the future we may get a kind of big reissue campaign of the van hagar stuff but until then i'm pleased with this and i definitely cannot wait to give it a spin Van Halen's for unlawful carnal knowledge. All right, so I did another trip over to Sky Valley Records, and for the first time, um, out of all the times I've been there, I decided to dig through their 7-inch section because, you know, I like 7 inches. I buy them. I collect them to some extent, but not as much to the high degree of, you know, regular 12-inch album releases. So I took a look, and I just was looking through the R section, and I saw this, and I've been aware of this release for a long time, and it just happened to be the first time that I actually saw it in person, and I was like, you know what? I have a couple extra bucks on hand. Let's have some fun. So I got my hands on Rush's Closer to the Heart. This is a release from Record Store Day Black Friday back in 2017. Uh, this is simply a re-release of the Closer to the Heart single uh, to coincide with the 40th anniversary of the Farewell to Kings album. Also comes with the B-side of Mandrigal. We have some new artwork from Hugh Syme who's been delivering some various up-to-date renditions of classic Rush covers for the various anniversary releases. And upon opening the sleeve, I saw this little goodie bag. And this was kind of a surprise because it was not described on the hype sticker. This is a nice little Farewell to Kings 45 adapter, which is absolutely awesome. So now I have another 45 adapter to use when I play my singles. And then here is the record itself, standard black vinyl with some nice custom labels there. So it's a pretty cool, interesting piece to add to my Rush vinyl collection. Cool to see a little surprise in the sleeve as well. And just an overall very cool release from Record Store Days Past, Rush Closer to the Heart. All right, so this is a record that I purchased off of Matt over at Too Many Records. He's one of the more notable YouTube channels here in the vinyl community. Um, if you watch his channel, you probably have seen that he is once again moving cross country and uh, he decided to part ways uh, with some records and he posted the list 
uh, of the stuff he was selling on his own Facebook group. And I checked it out and I emailed him instantly and said that I was interested in this record. And I got it today. It's in my hands. And that is... Peter Gabriel's Scratch My Back. This came out back in 2010. Uh, this was when he was doing a lot of work with um, with the symphony orchestra. Uh, Scratch My Back is basically him covering other people's material uh, with an orchestra. And then there was another album called I'll Scratch Yours, which was basically the same bands that he had covered, but they were covering his own material. So it's kind of like a sort of collaborative kind of thing. Uh, he also did a studio album of orchestral re-recording. He did a live album and a live film, did all kinds of stuff. I actually saw him um, on tour with his New Blood Orchestra, which was the name of it, uh, I believe in 2011, and that was such a fantastic show. But um, on this album, we have covers of material from artists such as uh, David Bowie, Paul Simon, Bonnie Vare, Lou Reed, Radiohead, Neil Young, Regina Spector, all kinds of artists. This is a nice gatefold sleeve here. And here is the bag, so you can see the track list. And uh, this pressing well, was actually put out by Classic Records, which is pretty cool. They're one of the notable uh, reissue audiophile labels out there. No longer active, unfortunately, since they got purchased by Acoustic Sounds. Uh, this, I believe, is the lightweight vinyl edition, because I believe there were different ones out there where it was like 200 gram and red vinyl and such. I believe this is the 140 gram version, but... It's, it's classic records. That means it's going to sound wonderful. And I should also mention the gatefold sleeve is quite sturdy. Nice tip-on style jacket. Good stuff. Cannot wait to play this. Peter Gabriel's Scratch My Back. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl haul of all the records that I acquired within the month of October this year in 2020. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the records spinning.